Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Passionless Speaking. You know what? I half expected you all to be wearing your sunglasses today, just so I would feel bad wearing mine. So where are your sunglasses? There we go. Thank you, Dr. Peggy. <laughs> all right. These aren't the cutest. These are my running glasses. And the reason why I wear these, I mean, I have Pradas and everything else. I have like, like five Maui gyms. But I wear these because they're so light, you know, because you could run in them that I don't even know I have them on. And so that and they're darker than a lot of uh, the other ones I have. So that's why I wear these funny looking things, not just because they're cool. <laughs> but in case you weren't here, I had an abrasion in my both eyes and uh, this the light really hurts them and I can't wear contacts and I really can't see past the screen. So... <laughs> And this too shall pass. Anyway, what we're doing today is part two. We had such a great time. Hi, Dr. Luana. We had such a great time Hi. last week with how to keep your story alive and not, you know, we only had time for really two people. I think we squeezed in three that we decided to do a part two today. So if you didn't come last week, you can, you can look at the recording because primarily it was um, stories tell you storytelling and then they got coaching for me. So who remembers who went last week? Who went last week? Tommy? I did. Oh, Jackie. I didn't. No, you didn't go. I didn't go last week. <laughs> no, tell us who. Okay. Oh, <clears throat> Jackie, Dr. Peggy. And. Dr. Peggy didn't go last time. No. Okay. It was Kay. Kay. Kay and yeah, Jackie. Somebody who couldn't be back. Kay, who, um, who I'm going to Africa with. On her tour, tour. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So today we're going to, you know, try to at least get two to three. And we're going to start with Karen because I think Karen has a fun story to share. And I want you to all just let her take you on the journey that she is about to take you on. I will take notes. Also, what I want you to think about is, is there any part in her story? Again, we're, we're perfecting it. The story, she's worked on it. She's got lots of coaching for me. But we want to make sure that our stories don't get stale. And we also want to make sure that we're constantly improving them. And I know Jason has been working on his story for probably 10 years, right? Is it 10 years, Jason? Something like that. Just making it better. And nine years, eight years, you know, a long time. In other words, you never, ever quit working on your professional story. It is that important. And sometimes you tweak it. And sometimes you don't redo it, but you you totally leave something out and bring it back in. You know, a lot of times, I mean, I, I would tell people that I worked for Deloitte because that's a big deal. You don't just graduate from high, uh, high school, <laughs> college and work for a big eight CPA firm. But then lately I've been leaving that part out because it's like now it's so long ago, maybe it's not even relevant anymore, right? So, because we only have so much time to tell our story. And sometimes we have to just really pick and choose what is important, what, what earns you the right to speak about what you're talking about. And it might not be a totally different career anymore. So uh, we're going for credibility but we're really earning the right to be speaking about our topic. Okay. So constantly want to tweak it. <clears throat> so let's go with Karen. I want you to all take notes. I want you to write down any area where you're unclear, like, okay, she said, what? Uh, I, uh, so instead of in your mind, because if you don't write it down, your mind will try to answer it and solve it. Right. And then you, sh you'll, you'll be left behind. So if there's something, you just jot down, not a sentence, but a trigger word, uh, jot down house, career, um, you know, something like that. And then we're going to come back and you're going to, you know, say whatever the word is so she can clarify it. But what that does, it's going to tell her that she's not clear. 
And if more than one person, I mean, one person could be just itching their head and not getting it, right? Or get distracted with their phone and miss it. But if multiple people say, yeah, career, what, it, what, you know, what is that about? Then Karen knows that she needs to spend a little more time there and define it or clarify it. Got it? Got it? When I say got it, you say got it. I say good. Got it? Got, got it. it. Good. All right. So, Tommy, I'm going to have you time her again, if you don't mind. And uh, whenever <laughs> you're both ready, let's wait. <clears throat> Let me get my phone. My phone's not here. Wow. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, we. how many of you have your phone right next to you? Right? Look at, yeah, we all mostly do. So good for you, Tommy, is what I'm trying to say for not having that uh, phone next to you. I only have because that's my clock. Um you know, I have a clock at my desk, but it's like now with these glasses on, I can't even see my <laughs> So I can't, well, I can't wear eyelashes right now. So I am covering the lack of eye makeup on, <laughs> you know? but I did try strips yesterday. Holy smoke. I haven't worn strips for probably, I don't know, a year and a half, two years. <laughs> Put those things on and the glue is like all over. It's like, oh my God, what a mess. You know, and one was perfect and the other wasn't. And the other one, you know, kept coming up on the side. And yes, I've tried magnetic. Don't try to sell me something because I've tried it all. Um, and, and most of them don't work. So I figured out, I mean, and I bought new glue. I, I mean, it was like a crazy tunes. It took me a half an hour just to get one lash on. And I thought, now I know why I go and, and pay the money to get lashes put on. <laughs> This is crazy. So I can't wait before I can go back and do that again. But that could be, well, it'll be another week because I see the eye doctor in another week and he does not like them. He said the glue is not good for you. I'm like, okay, I get it. Yeah, right. I'm going to make an appointment. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So Tommy, are you ready? Yeah, 15 minutes. Is that right? No, five minutes. Five minutes. Five yeah. minutes. Just doing her professional story. No more than five minutes, ladies and gentlemen, is your story. No okay. Unless you're doing a whole testimonial type speech, which the whole thing is a story, then that's a little different. Okay. But right now we're just talking about professional story. All right. I'm going to, Karen, I'm going to make you bigger today. Okay. Yeah spotlight you there you go yeah you look so cute today All oh right. thank you i probably have a bug in my teeth no you don't you look great okay so before i start can i share a little bit with you about my story yes so in the 90s i was at university and my focus at school was languages after my studies, I started working at Air Canada as a flight attendant. I thought, I'll do this job for five years. Well, it turned into my dream job. It was so much fun. Hot summer nights on the patios of New York City, fantastic night markets and star ferry rides across Hong Kong Harbor and those magnificent Christmas light displays at the markets all across Europe. I even met my husband on a flight. He was with friends traveling from London to Vancouver for a winter holiday in the mountains. We started chatting. We were both foodies. We were sharing restaurant stories. Next thing you know, we're chatting some more exploring all the nooks and crannies Vancouver had to offer. Hidden coffee shops with bookstores, Bramble Island farmers markets, all my favorite haunts. That year, I happened to be on call. And over the spring and summer months, I was sent to London 20 times. He would take the train up to meet me in London, or I would take the train down to Portsmouth where he lived. That one time we couldn't get together, 
He sent a friend with an enormous bouquet of flowers. Well, what was I to do? Eventually, we met in the middle, started a family, and much to my delight, we returned to Vancouver a few years later, now with our two young children. Our son Liam was two and our daughter Jasmine, six months old. I had visions of skiing with them, traveling the world with them, giving them the very best education that I could afford. But one day I learned on the news that Air Canada had filed for bankruptcy. We knew the company was struggling. We'd been asked to make sacrifices and pull together as a team, but bankruptcy, I was so mad, so frustrated. All the dreams I had for our family, they just vanished disappeared overnight. I still had my job, but I had lost complete faith in my future there at that company. And I started to look around for options. And as I began my search, I realized, actually, I wanted more. I wanted more challenge. I wanted more flexibility. And I wanted a lot more reward. I wanted to find a way to make money and contribute more. About the same time, I was invited to an event to hear a gentleman speak about a company that he bought. He was looking for partners and he was sharing his vision. I got excited. I was inspired by his vision. Do you want me to go on? Yes, so. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I got excited. I was inspired by his vision. He wanted to touch lives through wellness and to empower people to take back their own health, take back their own finances. I was in. I knew the brand. I trusted the science behind the products. And I understood the power of the business model to build a business and to make money. And I realized that we had to build a team. In 2014 and 2015, our team was recognized as top achievers in the company. And what began as one small step for our family of four turned into a whole organization of people. It was so much more than I have had ever imagined. And now I have a vision to touch 100,000 people with the, with 101 leaders. So many people are looking for change, but the problem is they're uncertain. They're conflicted, they're overwhelmed. They don't know where to turn, which direction to look. They don't sure, they aren't sure how to provide income in a period of transition. You want me to go beyond my story? Yeah, yeah, you're going to have to complete it. <laughs> to the end? No, go ahead. Complete it. Complete my story? story. Uh -huh. Okay. How do you identify and select the right partner for you? It really depends on you. What is your vision of the future? Now, let's use that word vision as a guide. And we're going to start with B. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let me get you off stoplight. There, okay, great. And I hope all of you took some notes. Now, there's just a few areas um, that I had a little question with. But before I mention what those were, so how many of you could see the Eiffel Tower? Right. I didn't talk about the Eiffel Tower. Why not? Yeah. That was the best part of the story. It's a, it's an N for vision, for natural fit. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Okay. You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. Uh, okay. So let me back up then. Okay. So I talked about the Star Ferry. That's right. So um, when you talked about, let me, let me just start over because the whole, my whole point was about the Eiffel Tower, but I forgot. It's been a while since. We, we've done this together, but you're right. That's vision. Okay. So 
in the beginning, you said the word foodie. We were both foodies. Now, some people may not know what that means. Okay. And you said it so fast at first, I thought you said booty. <laughs> now, Jason's nodding his head. What, what did you hear, Jason? Jason. You know, so if you're going to, I wouldn't even say we're both foodies. I would just say we were both into restaurants or we're both into eating or we're both, you know, or if you're going to say a term like that, you could say we were both using the, we, uh, the term food ease. Um, if you haven't heard of that term before, it means people that like to go out to restaurants or people that like to eat food. You're going to have to take the time and explain it. And here's why. Because we're creating a speech not only for where you live, but to take out of country. And I learned this the hard way. You cannot just be exclusive to what happens in America and get out there on, a, on the Nile River and talk about it because they're not going to know what the heck you mean. Right? So there's, that means because we're in a multicultural area, all of us are. There's going to be those people in our audience that are from Jordan or who knows where that aren't going to know the terms that are just for the U.S. or Canada or something like that. So you're either going to have to leave them out or ex take time to explain them. Got it? When you're using labels and, and, and slangy words and stuff. Got it? Okay, it's important because even though you're saying, well, I'm only going to speak in America, there's other people that are here now by the groves mm -hmm. that are going to be in your, you know, from Dubai, you know, there's Muslims, yeah. there's, you know, all kinds of different cultures here. So we want them all to understand because I'll tell you, there people from Dubai that come here, not only do they usually have money, but they're hungry for knowledge, hungry, they could be your next client. But if they don't understand what you're talking about, they're not gonna be. So very, very important. Sounds small, but it's really big. All right, um, <clears throat> so just make a decision on that. Then, then you said, you, and I love this story about meeting your husband and everything. Now you said it kind of fast, you went through all that really fast, but then you said we met in the middle. You never said you got married, <laughs> you know, and then, you know, you, you had kids and, you know, you wanted the best for your kids and, you know, somebody could think, you know, you didn't get married and you just start having babies. I don't know. We don't want them to stop there and kind of be thinking about it. Again, we have different cultures. We have different religions. We have different po political views. So we just want to, you know, just as much as we can control in terms of keeping their wandering of their head and thinking down to a minimum we do so just make sure we met we met in the middle what does that mean exactly we moved to the middle yeah okay we met in the middle okay great and then we started having babies what up on the airplane i'm not sure i understand you know, <laughs> you know? okay before so that say we got married Okay, so we moved in the middle of London and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Right? We moved in the middle and we got married, be very clear, and we started to have a family and I wanted the best for my kids, you know, that kind of thing. So we have to be deliberate and take our time. Don't rush through this, assuming people are going to know what we mean. Okay. Okay, again, I'm telling Karen, but this is for all of you. Okay, I loved how you did the one day and everything. When she did her one day, it was like, everybody listen, one day. And that's exactly how it should be. One day, whoop, right? Because we know some change is coming. Something's happening. And do you remember what her one day was? Who can remember? Hmm. She saw the oh. notice, got the notice that the airline was going bankrupt. That's yeah. right. 
changed her world when she was counting on every, you know, all the income to help her family and all of this. And then all of a sudden, boom, going bankrupt. She didn't know that. Now she still works for them to this day. Right. But at that time, you know, you could be like, think you're going to lose your job. You could think all kinds of things the rug pull it being pulled out from, you know, out from underneath you, the wind out of your sail. So pretty devastating, but I love, you know, how that was important. All right. So that's really all I have. Um, let's go around the room. Was there any, anything else that like you went, whoop, what does that mean? Or I'm confused or, you know, cause again, I've heard her story a lot of times. Anybody have anything that they might have written down? Tommy? And then Peggy? I'm guilty of this too, uh, Karen. <clears throat> but when you were uh, giving your talk, which which I was following, I could tell you were reading. Oh, yeah, I, I could too. I wasn't going to call you on that. <laughs> yeah. You were looking into the camera. I thought you were talking just to me. And then when you would look at your notes, it was distracting. Yeah, yeah. For our professional stories, ladies and gentlemen, you have to know it. Like the back of your hand, you have to know, like you know, like you know, and it's automatic. That's the only way you're going to get better at it, is to have it be automatic. Right? You can look at your notes if you need to for the content but not for the story, not for the rapport. Remember like this, the rapport. Anything can go in the middle. That means you can even look at your notes or your outline in the middle. But for the rapport, no, there's only five steps. For the close, no, because you'll ruin your clothes, the effectiveness of the clothes. In the middle, if you have to look, that's where you're going to look. Nowhere else. Thank you, Tommy, for that. Because I had it written down, but I, I I forgot to mention that. Okay, Dr. Peggy. Well, I love the visualization. I mean, when you tell your story, you drew me in because I could see everything that you were talking about. I love that part. But this might just be me. I was just wondering when you when you lost your job or you heard they heard they were going bankrupt and your dreams vanished, and it was like what what was your husband going to contribute? I felt like, well, you have to do it all. Might be just me, but I didn't, I didn't hear anything. Well, my husband, he was a help, but you know, I need mean, something like she that. She didn't lose her job. And maybe that's the question. She never lost her job. She just heard they were going bankrupt and got scared of losing her job. So maybe that's what's not clear, Karen. Because she still works for them today. Yeah. And I do say um, I, I still had my job, but I had lost faith. Oh, okay. so, maybe that wasn't clear enough. Or maybe big. I didn't say that profoundly enough. And, and I think so. Yeah. Because we don't really want to say I still have that job today because she's trying to you know, represent more of a, of a health product and health coach now. So we don't mm -hmm. really want to say, hey, and I'm working for Air Canada even today, yay, you know. But at the time, it's important that you still had your job. And, and maybe Peggy's, you know, got a point there where you can say, you know, I still, I still have my job and my husband still had his career going. So we ended up being fine. And then we can all go, ah, and, and relieve, you know, that you're all good and okay. See, it's just those little tweaks, but we need this kind of feedback to really know if we're being effective. <clears throat> Good job, Peggy. Okay, so can you tweak a little something like that? Like add, you know, my husband, I still kept my job. It, it ended up, I still had my job. And my husband, of course, had his career, but I did lose faith in the company. So I didn't want to put all my eggs in one basket so I started looking for other op career opportunities. And then as you looked, you found you went to this meeting, you found this product, you did that. And then now today, and I didn't hear the core message at the end either. I always look for that. And today, 
boop, boop, this is what I'm doing. Okay, that's how we end our professional story always. Hello, Evelyn. Evelyn, everybody say hi to Evelyn. She's been my angel for the last week and a half, taking care of me. Well, that's the infamous Evelyn. It was Evelyn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, she was reading the text when and would write back, don't text Arby, she can't see. A day later, somebody would text, how are your eyes? People are funny. <laughs> Still can't see out of them. <laughs> they never question who's who's writing this or reading this or, <laughs> or that email me. Same problem. <laughs> oh goodness sakes. Anyway, yeah. So Evelyn was the angel sent by God to take care of me. And she was strict. I was crying out for painkillers, and she you got a half an hour. Please, like some attic. <laughs> Split the difference. Let's do it in 15 minutes. <laughs> we can't hear you, Evelyn. You're muted. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I told her when she we were going to a meeting and she said she was in pain. She couldn't go. I says, well, you're going to go to the hospital. She says, no, I'm not. I says, yes, you are. You're going whether you like it or not. So we, we were there for six hours, and she got a three-hour massage on her shoulders, neck, and head to help release the pain till we got, got her in. But she was really good, you know, considering the pain she was in. Oh, I was that little old lady screaming in the, in the, in the waiting room. <laughs> I couldn't mm -hmm. see, so I was asking El El Evelyn, how many people are in here? She's like, oh, like 50 people. And I'm like, ah, ah. <laughs> help me, help me, help me. So she gave me the massage to shut me up. <laughs> Damn. And made her listen to music, because that helps with the pain. She was an angel sent by God, I'm telling you. The <laughs> devil maybe attacked me, but he sent an angel to protect me as well. <laughs> And Evelyn well, yeah. spent the night. She was here. If I coughed, she was right there. <laughs> okay. I also had a bronchial cold at the same time. I mm -hmm. crazy, crazy. So much better. Anyway, thank you, Evelyn. I just wanted to say publicly again, thank you. I told everybody oh, last you're week. Welcome. You weren't oh, here. did you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any let's uh who else wants to make a comment uh for Karen? Anything that they could, yes, Ardina. Uh, Karen, I just wanted to say, I really like how you told the story. I thought you really drew us in to your story. Um, at the end, I wasn't sure if you were laid off or not though. So I just wanted to mention that. But at the very beginning, you mentioned universities and I didn't catch what you were saying about universities. And you're on mute. Yeah, Leo. I was saying I studied languages. Okay. okay. My course of study was languages. Okay. 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 That was... might not have been clear. How many people got that Karen studied languages? Nobody. 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 Okay. So say that little part one more time. Let's see what why it's buried. Yeah. In the 90s, in the 90s, I was at university. Uh, my course of study there was languages. Okay. That's pretty um, clear. After my studies, I started to work at Air Canada. And I thought, I'll do this job for five years. Okay. But let me back up for a minute. What languages? Maybe we'll get it better if you mention the languages. How, okay. What languages did you study? Uh, French and German. French, German. Anything else? No, that was it. Okay, so I studied, I stu well, that's not, I mean, languages, I'm thinking five or six different languages. Okay. So I studied languages, primarily French and German. Okay. Now we all know it's languages, right? Speaking languages and not some other kind of language. Just mm -hmm. add those little two, because actually you could weave that into your air 
Canada by saying, I thought that'd come in handy. Right? Mm -hmm. You already knew English though, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, but you could, because otherwise it almost doesn't make sense. You went, you studied languages, but then you went into the airline. But if you went to the airlines after studying languages, hey, like, hey, you know, I thought this might, the languages would come in handy. I wanted to use them. So I joined Air Canada. Yeah, that's why, I, that's how I got the job. That's how you got the job? Okay. Yeah. Okay, then there you go. Let's tell everybody, you know, and okay. I got the job because of my ability to speak multiple languages. And I thought, oh, this will be fun. I'll meet people from all around the world. I mean, let's make it a human. Like, don't forget. I know sometimes the story's not that long, but don't forget to put your human feelings in it. We okay. all have motivation behind things that we do. And it's a lot more interesting if we share that motivation behind it, because then we can all go, ah, I get it now. Otherwise, there's a disconnect. Languages. Why would you go into be a flight attendant? Why aren't you going right. teaching languages or being a translator or some exotic mm -hmm. job somewhere? But now when you say, you know, that's why you got it and you thought it'd be fun to meet people from all over the world with different languages. Now we, now that's sexy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for catching that because I've not caught that. So very good. Jason, did you say, have something you wanted to say? It, it raises uh, what you just shared. It raise, raises a very important point about what we're mentioning in our stories and how they tie in from one area to another. So I know that I didn't really pick up on the language that Karen is mentioning because it didn't seem to tie in. What was that tied to? So I wrote down her three areas and I wrote down job, her husband and the company. Okay. And I was trying to create the lineage, you know, how does each one of those areas tie into each other to where we get to how or why she joined, you know, the company. And that's, real that simple example about her language really typifies the point yeah and then we all understand we can whew, we can rest okay yeah and i can comprehend her story uh in full in its entirety when i see how everything is integrated how they're tied in or if they one area spawn the other it's just how they all fit in i like that how they're integrated mm -hmm. that's a great mm -hmm. word jason how they're integrated I say connected, but integrated is even better. I love it. Okay, what else? Anything else before we move on to Jason? Think of, look at your notes, think about, was there anything that, again, you're, you're helping not only Karen, but you're helping each other as well? Yes, Jackie, you're muted. <clears throat> Great job, Karen, I really enjoyed it. I had trouble with the word Air Canada. I think that needs to be said more slowly because okay. the first time you went through it, I was kind of like, what? And then the second time I got that it was Air Canada, but I had to think about it. Good. And maybe do you think she has to say something like um, Air, um, the uh, Air Canada, the um, what do you what do you call a, a, a plane company? I'm, I don't know. The the what you call airline airline airlines thank you Woo! you know the airlines Air Canada and that's why we're ready for it the airline Air Canada I'm just yeah, that would have that would have helped that would help because we know again what Air Canada means but if someone just moved here from another country they're not going to know what that means. They're not going you know it could be a building it could be a company you know that makes widgets who knows so maybe if you say the airlines or the popular airlines or the you know the whatever you know because they they were popular i guess they still are yeah okay um so i went into language issues because i love why are you breaking up you're blah 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 what happened 
I went into languages because I was fascinated by different cultures, which obviously is why I took that job. No. Yeah, you can't hear me? No, we don't care why you oh. would necessarily. Oh, would. okay. So that's that's good. That's clarity. That's clarity for me. I mean, I'll just stick with the language. We don't have time right now. Yeah. We're trying to connect the languages, the college with why you got a job at Air Canada. Okay. And not a job translating or being some sort of, you know. Other thing. Yeah, other thing. I mean, okay. I, love, I love that story and why you got in it, but I'm just not sure we have time. Your story's already over five minutes. Okay. You have to be careful. Like you could fudge for six minutes, but that's about it. Okay. Remember, okay. ladies and gentlemen, anything in your personal story you don't have time for there, you can put it in later. Just remember this first five minutes is to earn you the right to be speaking about it. It's to get that credibility so because Ardina is sitting there going, and why should I listen to you talk about health? Well, then when you hear a story and her struggle or whatever, you go, oh, okay, that's cool. Cool, I get it, right? Or you learn how Jackie, you know, is a runner now, but she, um, you know, her, her heel was four or five inches above the ground. I love how she says her leg shriveled up like a what would you call it, Jackie? My leg shriveled up. I mean, I could picture that, you know, like you open up this cast, you're all ready. And all of a sudden you, you know, you're in shock because one leg doesn't look like the other leg. I mean, that is pretty revealing and courageous to share, right? And here she's a runner, a marathon runner, not just a runner. A marathon runner. How many marathons have you ran? Four. And how many half marathons? I don't know. Too many to count. See? And she's still running today. And how old are you? No, I'm not. Well, not no, I'm not running today. <laughs> that happened from running. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> but. And I am 78. I'll go ahead and say. There you go. I mean, bam, okay? And the doctor said, you'll never run again, okay? I mean, that's a fabulous story. That gives people hope and it gives people at, at 78 hope, right? It's amazing. <clears throat> okay, beautiful. All right, one last chance before we move on to Jason. Anybody else have anything else that they want to clarify? with Karen's story. I'm sorry, I have one more little thing. One more little thing, you got it. <laughs> you said you were, um, you lived, where did you live before and you moved to where? Cause um, you said you met in the middle. Did you, what, did you move from the United States to Canada or? I wasn't sure. Um, I didn't say where I lived. I, I lived in Vancouver and he lived in England and we, we ended up moving to not to another country, but uh, I didn't say that in my Why story. Why don't you? Why don't you? I don't think it'll hurt. You don't think it'll hurt? <clears throat> no. Okay. Because it doesn't take too much time to explain it because Peggy had that question. Where'd you move from where? Okay. We moved to Bermuda. Yeah. He was fun. in. Okay. Well, that's pretty exotic. Okay. <laughs> so, so I was in Canada. He was in England. So we did what any smart couple would do. We we met and we met and married in the we we moved in the middle, which was Bermuda. I mean, wow, that sounds exotic. We did what any couple would do. We met and we met and just we decided to get. I don't want to say met in the middle because you said that, but we <clears throat> we decided uh, on the middle to uh, raise our. <laughs> Makes it more interesting when you have a little of the detail. Yes. Okay. Bermuda. Who's ever heard of anybody living in Bermuda from England and Canada? I mean, that's pretty exotic. You said okay. in the middle of England and Canada. I was thinking, well, that's the middle of the ocean. So it's important to say Bermuda. I think. There you go. So we decided to live, you know, we got married and decided to move in the middle, which was Bermuda. And how long were you in Bermuda? Six years. That's pretty exciting. You don't have to say that. We don't care. 
<laughs> it could have been 10, it could have been seven. But uh, yeah, Bermuda's pretty exciting. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Peggy. These are good. This is good, 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 good. Thank All you. right, and Tommy's right. More of that detail makes it more interesting because again, England, Canada, I mean, it, it's like polar opposites, Bermuda. I mean, it's so different from either one of those places, weather-wise, anyway. Yeah. Right? That's exciting. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Let's give uh, Karen a big hand for that and being brave. Yes. And thank you all for your input. Okay. So we're going to time. Now, Tommy, let's try a different kind of timing. Instead of timing down, let's just time it. So if they go over, we know how much time they went over. I think that would be good feedback for them to know. So if it's a minute over, again, we won't worry about it. But if it's a 20-minute story, we got to cut it in half and cut it down. Okay. And I know Jason's, too, is a, a little bit long. Um, but it's okay because we put so much detail in it over the years. Sometimes it can be long. Okay. So let's see how long it got. Because, you know, it's like when you tell the story to somebody that tells the story to somebody and tells it and it gets longer and longer and longer. So we'll see. It's <laughs> okay. Anytime you're ready, Jason. Thank you. And good afternoon, everyone, to uh, this. Good afternoon, everyone, for this to this passionately speaking class. And uh, thanks for the invitation to speak with you. And before I, I share with you about how uh, the five mistakes that parents make towards getting scholarships and private grants. Uh, I'd like to share with you my story on how I became cause in the matter and where I want to support students and families to have a great life. Would that be okay with you? Yes. Thank you. So it's Saturday morning, July 10th, 1993, approximately 1 a.m. And I was excited about leaving Los Angeles to attend a film a summer film school in Arcata, California. Now, attempting to make a 10 hour drive on less than four hours sleep, I had fallen asleep behind the wheel somewhere along the 40 mile grapevine. And two days later, I woke up to find myself in a hospital with an overwhelming lack of understanding as to what had happened to me and how did I get there. And I saw my mother staring atop of me with a look on her face as though she received the midnight phone call. And I thought to myself, why am I here with her? What happened on my drive to the freeway, on the freeway? Did I make it to Arcata, California? And she leaned in and she told me, Jason, your car flipped over three times and your left leg is now broken in two places. I can visibly see my left leg and I can't feel it. And I turned back to my mother and I saw a surgeon standing next to her and he said, Despite all the surgical efforts, you're down to only just two options, lose your leg or lose your life. And I shut my eyes and prayed to God that this was just a complete nightmare and that I'd wake up in, in a hotel in, in Arcata, California, like I had planned. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's easy. Choose life, of course. Yet the decision for me wasn't that simple. And my first choice was to lose my life rather than to lose my leg for I couldn't see imagining my life continuing with, for me without both of my legs. And I was very adamant in my decision until a private conversation I had with my mother changed everything. And through a mother's love for God, it was made clear to me that the same love that, that hugged and cared for me when I was a child was the same love that hugged and cared what was best for me now. And I had no idea that I was uh, that significant, nor did I consider the emotional consequences that my decision would have on others. And so a week after my accident, I chose life and I became dismembered with confidence. Now the dream of returning to my mother's arms was soon met by financial nightmares in the wake of my amputation. Just nine weeks after my accident, I returned to college and to work full time with my life in complete financial gridlock. I had no assets, low savings, and no financial plan. And whatever contributions my parents were making toward my medical expenses were now allocated towards their divorce proceedings. Mm. 
and nearly $100,000 worth of debt in the form of physical and occupational therapy and services not covered by my insurance became the financial prosthesis that I would now walk with for the next seven years. Learning how to walk again involved co-payments and deductibles. I was a long way from those days of childhood pranks and scraped knees. I was literally on my own in a desperate need of new solutions and a plan. Now, fortunately, by June 2000, my academic persistence paid off. Between using my employment income and several scholarships, I had self-financed my education and graduated summa cum laude. Yet despite experiencing one of the greatest days of my life, I had become my own financial liability. I proudly received my bachelor's degree in one hand, and two days later, I filed medical bankruptcy with the other. Now, there are two things that I don't ever want to remotely happen to you. First is not being able to save as a result of becoming enslaved to debt. And second is having decisions toward long-term wealth being affected by circumstances rather than by a simple achievable plan governed by your own values. In this very short period of time, as I unfold my story, I want to give you the space, the opportunity to recognize immediate takeaways about yourself that I've realized as I've gotten to the heart of the matter of what it means to be a human being. And this isn't something that you and I don't know. It has something to do with ways of knowing and, and how more how the mere distinguishing of this brings them into existence. The question is, do you know how much your existence really matters? I mean, today, rather than becoming a liability, you must be your biggest investment. Wealth now, now must be generated with profound action and responsibility. And there's a true difference between learning how to walk again and putting your best leg forward. Losing my leg versus losing my life was a ridiculous ultimatum, but losing my leg didn't mean that my life was over, physically or financially. Now, putting my best leg forward, I now teach students and parents how to break through their financial constraints and create a life experience whereby money is an instrument of transformation, both during and after college. And not only can they transfer spiritual and um, their spiritual and personal needs in the way of assets, they discover what is really possible to create financial independence leading to legacies that will stand the test of time. And so my vision for financial security and freedom is simple. I want you to stop walking on rocks with bare feet to make money. And I want you to move into your own financial Learjet with your own pilot. You, to transport you to financial independence effortlessly. All you have to do is get on the plane and buckle up. And it's about removing the fear in this area of your life so that you can focus on what matters most. And that is why I teach middle class and affluent families how to discover new possibilities using prosperous financial strategies so they can live a life of real happiness with no worries about college education, bills, long-term care, or retirement. Okay, so close to seven minutes. Okay, no, it was about six. Okay, good job. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, so in the beginning, I don't, and maybe I was taking a note, but I missed the part. Did you say that you looked up at your mom and, and she looked as if she received the midnight phone call? Yeah. Okay. All right. I mentioned that. Okay. And then whatever happened, and, and one of the things I think just a little teeny switch um, instead of, uh, let me, you, you told, it's kind of like you told us the end of the story before the story. So instead of saying you fell asleep somewhere around the grapevine, it might work better if you just flip that around a little bit. So I was, as I was, you know, I was driving through the grapevine and I fell asleep. So it would be uh, attempting to make a four hour drive, a 10 hour drive on less than four hours sleep somewhere along the 40 yeah. mile grape line, I had fallen asleep behind the wheel. Yes, exactly. Okay, got it. The opposite. Yeah, that's Okay, cool. flip that around. Okay, got it. And then you might, yeah, and I know you said you went back to college, but you never mentioned film school again. So just like what we said about Karen, 
maybe it's time to kind of wrap that piece up and just say, I never did attend film school because now it's like, oh, you know? Okay, I'm gonna have to, um, yeah, I could see where film school uh, creates you know, a different it, distinction. It was a summer, it's a, it's a film workshop, but that was connected to the college I was attending. Oh, okay. So, so and it was attached to the degree you were taking? Yeah, yeah, it was attached to the degree. But you could still say, I returned to college. I never did get to go to that film school, but I did right. college. Okay. You know, and yeah. then, yeah. And then, um, and then, and then in the end, I know you've added a lot to the end, but it felt like it kept going on a little long and it felt like you were selling to me and you just kept hammering it. Did anybody else feel that way? Okay. Yeah. Um, I okay. mean, you know, you were lecturing me, you know, invest in yourself and no, 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 no. And, you know, and it's your story, right? So I think back off from that a little bit. If you want to put that in there, which is eloquent words, I love everything you said, it would, I would add it more to the problem, pain and suffering. The problem is people don't invest in yourself and you've got to invest in yourself, blah, 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 blah right? So that this doesn't happen to you. But as part of your story in there, and, and it's kind of you kept, you started down that road. And I'm like, okay, I could take a little bit. And then you kind of backed up a little bit, talked about yourself. And then you hit me again. I felt like I was hit about three times with this, you know, more like, you know, this kind of feeling of being sold to and lectured to and hammered on. Is anybody else with me? I want to see some hands. Let Jason see some hands. See? Okay. So um, just look at that last bit of it and um, reduce some of the selling part of it. Keep your story in there. But, you know, and, and so you, you don't want that to see that happen to anybody. What happened to you? You don't want to see that, but not telling us we've got to do this and we've got to do that. Not here. You do that in the meat. Here, it's just about how you feel. So we fall in love with you because we were feeling sorry for you, fall in love with you, and yet going, yay, 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 you're courageous and confident. And then you just started hammering us, you know? So just okay. be careful. And what? Last week, we said the same thing. To, who was it that we said it to? Jackie. Jackie, that's right. Jackie was, you know, brought in a little bit of that that, um, uh, you know, the, the company name and stuff like that, we recommended that she leave that out at that point. She could bring that in later, you know? And you saw Karen didn't do that. She, she didn't never mention that company name. <clears throat> Her, you know, the company that she's um, working with on the health front. Yeah. Karen okay. was a good student. She learned from me. <laughs> yes, probably. So just okay. look at that and back off a little bit. Take it out. It's all good stuff, but it goes somewhere else. Okay. You're absolutely right. Yeah, keep going. I, I know where you're talking about too, because that yeah. makes the two, that's what added the two minutes. The two minutes that I added, I could take it out. But yeah, I got it. Stuff like, you know, do yeah. you know, do you know, you know, and when now you're talking to, you know, you know, teaching us and be your best investment and yeah. That part. I like the question still. I just needed to diff, um, just leave the question as itself than trying to preach a perspective on the question. I, I could, because it's a very powerful question for everyone to consider. Do Which, you know how much your existence really matters? Yeah, but it doesn't go here. This is your story. You got to wrap up. Oh, right. Story. Then you can say, do you know how much your existence really matters? You know? you know what? I used it at the beginning at one time. I used it at the very beginning, and this time I put it at the end. I think it was better to put it at the beginning and start my story from there. Story? Yeah, I used the question, do you know how much your existence really matters? And I said, I know that life holds no promises as to what will come your way. No, it goes in the problem, pain, and suffering. Okay. The problem is, you know, it's like, do you know how much your life is worth? See, the problem is most people don't. And then you could talk about you and the leg and the choice and you were willing to give it all up. Got it. But it would break your mom's heart. 
you know, that kind of thing. So I would put it in problem, pain, and suffering. Okay. We've got to love you first. We got to fall in love with you without threat, without, you know, being sold to. Okay. Right. Very yeah, yeah. good. Let's go around the room. There's probably a lot more uh, feedback we, uh, for you. Okay. Jackie has her hand up. Jackie. That was awesome, Jason. And I've heard it many times. Always love it. And I enjoyed it a lot. <clears throat> Before you actually got into your story, you said something about cause and matter. And I didn't understand what that meant. Okay. okay. <clears throat> what and was it kind that? of distracted me from where you went next. But then I loved how you talked about a financial prophecies. That was prosthetic. That was just like Oh, wow. That, that really good language. It was like awesome. And then I also wondered, um, just like in Karen's story, I know where the grapevine is. But if you're using this all over the place, maybe um, climbing a stretch of mountains in Southern California would be more clear. Ah. Or it could be the grapevine in Southern California. Maybe that's all we need as well. But for some people might not know it's in Southern California, which is a stretch of mountains or something. Yeah, gotcha. good point, Jackie, because we're talking about making this like for a, for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, so go back. Where's that part where you say cause and effect? Uh, say that little couple of Being seconds. Being cause and the matter? Yeah, that uh, that was my intro. I was working on, um, you know, something that I developed uh, because it was it's representing who I am as a possibility. And um, when I go, be, you know, as I address, uh, you know, families, and so one of it being cause in the matter is the the cause um, in in the matter of getting families and students to access yeah, resources. So that's not part of your professional story. Okay, got it. Leave that completely out. I mean, your professional story needs to start when you're on the road, you're so excited, you're going to film school. You're in college, you're going to film school, whatever year it was, time and place, you're on the road, but you only have four hours of sleep. Okay. And little did you know, you know, you're, you're going up the grapevine, which is a stretch of mountains, that's good, a stretch of mountains in Southern California, just to, you know, and felt and fell asleep, just to wake up to see your mom, who looked like she just had got received a midnight phone call. Okay, so are you saying that I don't need that intro, then I can go right into the no, story? No, you don't need the intro. Got it. Okay, cool. Yeah, not at all. Got it. If you put that, you could put that as a, again, a conclusion for the solution for the problem, pain and suffering. Yeah. You can use it somewhere, but not in your store, not in the beginning. You don't need an intro. Ladies and gentlemen, stories start with a time and a place, once upon a time in a village long, long ago, far, far away. That's it, right? right. So it yeah, was yeah. back in whatever year it was, you were in college and film school, that's our place, you're on the road, that's the place. And that's how you start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know. See, sometimes that's what happens because when we, we have a story and we keep think, wanting to work on it and add, he didn't start out that way. This is after years of adding and adding and adding. And sometimes then all of a sudden our story becomes this big ball and, and we got it because we've told it a million times to ourselves, but nobody else gets it. So Jackie, I'm glad you mentioned that because I didn't catch that either because I've heard it. Where did Jackie go? Because <laughs> I've heard it a, mil a lot of times as well. So yeah, she's right. Okay, what else? Who else? Peggy, did you have something? Yeah, so so I love your story. I mean, the last time I heard it, it was just, it was perfect. I don't know why you changed it, but um, you had very highs and lows I felt the lows, but when you, you said, I graduated um, summa cum laude, that's like a really big thing. And Huge. you feel like a little more excited about that because I'm really feeling bad about all the other stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then you say, um, I like the way you said, you know, of course you don't want it to happen to anybody, but you went to back to work after nine weeks. And I'm like, how did you do that? You know? Yeah. 
you, you had, I didn't know what happened to your leg, if you were in a wheelchair, if you had prosthesis by then. I mean, but you healed very quickly to go back to, to be able to go back to work. And, you know, I don't know how you felt about that because I don't know, I'm just real analytical. But no, that's like, good. Maybe you need to add a little how you felt, even though you didn't feel like it, you had to financially go back to work without a leg. And she's right. Did you, you didn't have a prosthesis at that time, did you? Nine weeks later? No, no I did not. Okay. So now, now you left the hospital in crutches or something, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then you said, um, you talk about your, how, why now you're in a financial career. And I think that's really great because you know, you went from a debt bankrupt and your parents um, debt, high debt, and you went into the field, but I don't know when and how you came out of debt. Good point. How did you? Okay. Jason, how did you get out of debt? He claimed bankruptcy. He said he got his diploma in one hand and bankruptcy papers. Medical yeah, I'm not bankruptcy in the other yeah are you talking about coming out of debt at that time or how having come out of debt in today and becoming a, a planner because i the the way i transitioned it was um okay my academic resistance paid off um I mean, I self-financed it. So, I mean, I came out, I did file medical bankruptcy, you know, when I came out, but from that lesson about, you know, where I misstepped with not being able to balance my medical expenses against what I had, it, that's really what led the path or the discovery about wanting to learn more about financial literacy, learn more about how money works. So Learn you some of the because of the bankrupt because you filed the bankruptcy. Yeah, you just cleared your debt, right? And moved so despite despite having learned some ways of how to acquire money, you know, through private scholarships and grants, there's other areas of money now to to that were made known. What I didn't know was, you know, in terms of how that balances out between the medical expenses. I did, I was able to finance my education, but ultimately I was not able to support, you know, be in integrity with taking care of my debts with via my medical expenses. So was, there was one thing about for supporting my education, but I did still the, the financial journey was incomplete because I didn't really completely finance my life. I now was clear about what the end game was. I, I just feel like there's a little gap between being in debt and coming out of debt and moving to the financial literacy. It's like a little something, I don't know. Probably that's why in a sense, I might need to delete the two, the extra two minutes that I generated because yeah, you're, you're asking now more for something than what, if I'm addressing an issue about just getting scholarships and grants, that's just the first step for students and families for me to teach them. Eventually it's about getting more financial literacy towards other things in their adult life. But what you're alluding to means for me to expand on a whole bigger picture in that five minutes that I, I am concerned that might be too big for students and families at that time. Well, the point is, is that because you did bankruptcy and did all this and got in such financial trouble, you don't wish that on anybody else. Right. So now, you, so you went back to school, you learned more about financial, whatever, literacy, because you didn't want that to happen to you again. And now you're teaching other people because you don't want it to happen to them. But I think it's in there. But I think because you took us on a side road with all that kind of sales stuff that we lost. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. get rid of some of that, keep clean it up a little bit. And then today, you know, I do this um, because I never want what happened to me to happen to somebody somebody else now it, yeah this is a this is a real valuable lesson for me excuse me because i think now i'm gonna just have i see the purpose the validity to having two different versions because this version um 
was one that I used for the book. And I clearly see that uh, that version for the book is not going to be a version that I can see now since I have see a sense of where people will trip up if as I if I continue to use this version in my presentations. The the one that I did, the presentation that I gave at the score event, uh, RV, I think is the best one I'm going to use. And it has more power because not only is it shorter, but it really just it hones in on the story. I got a lot more response than that than what okay. in terms of taking something from a book or a bio sheet. I see now that there are different, you know, ways of sharing my story in different formats, whether it's going to be it's a different story in a bio sheet versus in a book versus a presentation. Well, you could think that, but really it should be pretty much the same because you yeah. open the hearts. Right. And add the sales technique, it closes the heart right back up. They're open and then they go, oh, he just did that to try to sell me. Yeah, so see, I don't need that for the presentation yeah. if I'm doing that, you know, yeah. The book maybe or a bio sheet, but not, not in presentation. Right. Yeah. The bio sheet that. maybe, but not, maybe. not a presentation. Right. Because you have the rest of it. You have the meat and the you have the, a close. You've mm -hmm. got the presentation. You can mm -hmm. do it there. Yeah, it's not just the story. Yeah. yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our time, we're a little over time. Thank you for sticking around. And uh, we'll come back next week with a new topic. So have a great week, everyone. And we'll see you back here next week. And hopefully I will be able to really see you back here next week. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night.